Hey traders, going to give you a another market update. Let's get straight into it. Do not place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video today because trading is risky and it can cause substantial financial loss. There are so many areas you need to become good at to become a good trader. Emotional mastery, chart reading, trading systems, money and trade management. So this video is just educational only to help you become a much better trader. All right, traders, so uh, I'm going to give you a market update. I've been doing my trading this morning as well too and looking at the markets and seeing what I'm seeing and so on and so forth. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of analysis and bit of an understanding of what I see and so on and so forth. So looking at the weekly chart here on the Dow Jones uh, weekly chart here and oh, what I see is this. So firstly, obviously Dow Jones, Dow Jones 30. Firstly, what we do see guys, if you could see this, this I brought up a candlestick chart because it's much easier to see with what I'm trying to represent here. You can see here, this is the very first time we've actually had a higher wick, a higher wick than the a higher wick uh, than the body uh, ever since this move started. And you can see that the last time we got a similar, 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 um, <laughs> um, the last time we got this sort of setup, very similar setup, not the same setup, was this one right here. And you can see what happened, the ne you can see what happened the next week. Bam. So, um, so you can see that's that's you can see that's that's what happened uh, when we got a very similar setup like that. So let's actually go through this here. Now you can see on the reverse as well too. Like the reverse is that when you get these, oh that's this huge right? That's just huge. Look at that long wick, and it kept it up, and you got this long wick here, kept it up, and then bam, came back down, had this long wick, and had an up wick, came back down. And you can see this one here, this is very, very similar. We had a long wick, um, very small body, and the market market turned around, market reversed. So you can see is that that's what type of candle we're getting there uh, when it comes to when it comes to reading that, that chart there. So you can see that that could be a possible, possible turning point. Now here's uh, once again, uh, here's what I do say. Let me do this here. As you can see that the market has continued to push higher highs on these weekly bars every higher high, 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 higher high, higher high, and almost and almost a higher high um, here, maybe double bottom. So what I'm saying is this: is that firstly, if we close below, if we start to if we start to reverse back down and come back down and get below here, that's a weak sign. If we close the week down here then that that that'll be the start of the downward move we're looking for um or i could just keep continuing up but <laughs> but the thing is is um <clears throat> that that that's exactly what we look for okay that that's that that's exactly what i'm looking for so i've got all these things going on my mind right now i'm just thinking what am i going to say to you guys but um <laughs> but you can see that's what i'm looking for so if this market comes down closes below there that's going to show weakness in this move running up Okay, so that's exactly what um, I'm looking at there on the Dow Jones. Same with the S&P 500, very, very almost identical setup, lower close. Looking at the, so it's the S&P 500, it's the Dow Jones. The Russell had a higher close, but once again, you can see on the market that we've actually had on the weekly chart, we've had these higher highs all the way up on this, on these weekly bar. Weekly bar high, weekly bar high. High, 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 all the way up. So if we come down and close there, then that's going to break the higher high pattern, and that's going to show the the uh, that that's probably going to start to show the tune of the reversal pattern there. And so that's that one there, and then also the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq actually has been probably the weakest out of the whole lot. Um, you can see the Nasdaq. If I bring up my trend lines, you can oh, they're gone. So you can see the NASDAQ, especially at this point here, is having a lot of problems at this weekly chart. A lot of problems. And if you see this here, you can see that the market's compressing up, compressing up through basically that level through there. As you can see, this weekly chart is bouncing off, bouncing off, bouncing off. And we're getting a lot of, a lot of uh, probably, 
Uh, no, nah, not that top one. But you can see the Nasdaq's definitely squeezing up, squeezing up. So um, that's that's definitely something to be to keep to be keeping an eye out for this week. So overall, guys, we can see that this market is squeezing up, squeezing up into this triangle pattern here. Uh, on the uh, on the Russell, we've just been slowly, slowly, slowly extending up to the high side. Now, guys, you can see that's exactly what we're looking on the short term there. Okay, but if I go back to my go back to the say the, the Dow Jones and I squeeze this chart up once again, if you're looking at that's that's the, that's looking at the candlestick. If we look at the the overall flow of the market, you can see it's actually made a higher high there. So that actually might be really it's actually really really interesting on the Dow Jones to see it actually make a higher high compared to this high here. So, but the thing is, is that every other market has not made a higher high yet. Every other market has not made, this was, this was the absolute high point up here, and it could not best that. Um, and when you're looking at the closing bar, this is the closing bar of this week here. So that's, you can, and you can see this week here, the market hasn't actually closed uh, up there yet. So it hasn't actually best this high yet. So we're still making a lower high, and a lower high here on the S and P, and you can see that that's we didn't we didn't do it on the Dow Jones, so we actually made a higher high on the Dow Jones. We made a bit of a double bottom on the Dow, on that chart there. We can see, but but we can see, yeah, on the S and P we made a lower high. On the on the Russell looks like we're going to make another. We're going to make a a higher a, a lower high, lower peak, lower peak, so on and so forth. You can see all through here, lower peak, and then a lower peak, and then and then another lower peak is likely to form where we are right now. And also the same with the uh, same with the NASDAQ as well too. We're making a lower low, and we're making lower peaks, lower peaks all the way down. So that's actually, that's actually getting ready to turn guys. So we're getting, we're still making these lower highs, lower highs overall on this big weekly chart. So the weekly chart for me guys is still very, very, very weak. Now, the thing is, let me actually go to the daily chart now. And again, I brought up the candlestick chart to show you. I'm trying to represent what I'm seeing here, and I think you guys can see it much better on a, on a candlestick chart. Looking at the Dow Jones here, first thing that I want to show you guys is that we have a and we have a Fed announcement coming out uh, in a couple of days, and it seems like every time we get this slight little pullback, slight little pullback, and then the Fed announcement comes out, and then the market shoots up. So that's what we could be in in shoe for for the next cup for, for this week. They might might have another shoot up, um, or they might be, or they might say, you know what, they're they're not happy with it, and the market market starts to drop off. So um, so obviously something's happening through here because every time every time we get a a Fed announcement, it has a slight little pullback, and then boom, the the Fed the Fed speaks and the market pushes up, and then we're doing the exact same thing we're at right now. The market's slowly pulling back. And the um, FOMC is going to make an announcement, um, you know, in a couple of days' time frame, and then bam, you know, it's likely to go up again. And it just seems like it's following that, that that line there. So that's for the short term, anyway. We, we you know, who knows who knows what's going to happen with the Fed when the Fed comes out and says what they're going to say. But you can see that's exactly what's happening through there, and we're likely to see some more upside. That being said, guys. That being said, um, I still am. I still am. You know, no matter what the Fed's doing. I still am, I, I still am getting this overall major slight weakness on there, and we're still getting this divergence on the RSI as well too. So my stochastics is up here pointing down once again. So is my RSI pointing down through here. So that's actually looking really weak. So that's the S and that's the Dow Jones. How's it, what's the S and P look like? The S and P same thing. So we're getting. We're getting this divergence, really nice divergence, still on this RSI. Oh, sorry, the stochastics and the RSI is definitely giving the divergence through there. So, uh, we are, we are definitely in tune. We are definitely ready for a pullback. We're definitely getting we're definitely getting ready for a pullback. Um, and the more this extends to the high side, the harder this thing is going to pull back. And you watch, guys, something is going to come out in the market. It just happens. And if this, and, you know, if this does push up high and push up high, it might make one little, it might make one little run for another new high up here, and then guess what? Bam! Something, something's going to come out, and it's going to have a big drop. Maybe not that big. Um, some people think, oh, John, you know, it's not going to go from twenty one hundred down to nineteen hundred in one day. Well, it actually, might. You know, if we have like a black swan or swan event, um, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. 
So you can see that's what's happening on the S&P 500 as well too. You can see looking through there. And obviously looking at the Dow Jones, uh, the Dow Jones looking the same thing. The Russell is not doing anything there. And But on the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is definitely, definitely the weakest out of the whole lot. The NASDAQ's not doing much at all. So NASDAQ's looking really weak. And the reason why the NASDAQ's weak is because a lot of the stocks are not, uh, are actually, a lot of the stocks are actually gapping down when we're looking at that. So that's the next thing I actually want to talk about in this weekly market update. So that's that's a bit of a technical set. That's a technical sort of picture that I see, guys. Um, that's a technical picture of what I see on the economy. Now, I want to talk about the economy as a whole. Um, what's actually happening, guys, you're seeing that a lot of the announcements that are coming out, whatever the announcement is, these markets are gapping down. Okay, the markets are gapping down. For example, if you look at uh, Apple, okay, if you look at Apple, look what happened with Apple. Apple Apple had an announcement come out and it broke down. So ever since Apple's high, Apple has gone down about 7%. And you can see it's been on a week, week basis. It's been, obviously hit the 200 moving average here and it came down. Now on the weekly chart, I was always saying that Apple's looking weak here. I was always saying Apple's looking weak. Why? Because we're just getting this overall flow and it's hitting this hitting this area of resistance. I and mean, obviously we have we have this area here of resistance, big head and shoulder formation. It just ran back up to this trend line and rejected off. So that's actually what we see in the big picture chart. So I was, I was expecting to see downward move. Now when I talk about divergence, you can see guys, especially on Apple, you can see here it made a slight higher high but look at the stochastics there and look at the RSI, screaming weakness. And we had this overall, what do we have? We had this overall major head and shoulders, head, and this was the shoulder, major, um, uh, major peak, major lower, major peak, major lower peak, and it's likely to form another lower peak here. Remember that was at the weekly chart there. So now we can actually see that Apple's actually falling off. Obviously, obviously you know, Apple is part of, part of the NASDAQ. Um, what else do we have? We had, um, what was that, Microsoft, um, and has Microsoft. So we also see Microsoft came off last week as well too. You can see Microsoft actually had a huge gap down. We're talking like almost a 7% gap down. Um, and you can see these these markets, these markets are now gapping down instead of gapping up. You know, during the last couple of, couple of announcements that you can see, you can see here, gap up, gap up, gap up. Every time it had an announcement, it gapped up. What's happening now? It's gapping down. That's actually showing you something. See, a lot of these earnings are being false, being fictitious, um, that have been coming out, and we're actually seeing the market actually gap down. What happened with, uh, say, IBM as well too? IBM, same thing, right? A big gap down, now it's rolling back up to close this gap, and then guess what I see with, guess what I see overall with IBM? You, well, look where IBM is on the weekly chart, right? Always go back to the weekly chart. Look where IBM is right now. So I'm expecting IBM maybe to rally up a little bit more, um, or maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit more, and then start to come back down again. You can see IBM. Uh, what else is announced? Um, Netflix and Netflix. Um, net, Netflix. So same with Netflix, right? Look what happened to Netflix. Netflix actually gapped down as well too. Now, why did Netflix gap down? Well, look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart, and, I, I, and this is the reason why guys, I talk about the peaks and troughs all the time and, and, and also the divergences. We have this trough here, major lower trough, had this bit of a bit of a high trough through here, little bear flag run up. Netflix looks really really weak overall, guys. Look at that, and it's made this had this had this bear flag formation, big 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 bear flag, and it's broke out to the downside now. I was expecting that. Strong sellers, weak buyers made a low major lower trough, major lower major lower trough, major lower peak, um, and that's where it is. So Netflix, where is Netflix gone? Well, I like to use my projection tool. So if I if I if I look at Netflix, I'll draw a, I'll draw that I'll draw the because that's already made the peak there, and so I'm just gonna connect this high point up here. Okay, so this now what I'm doing now, guys, is I'm I'm seeing where is Netflix likely to go. So I've got this one point up here, and once it's made its second peak, so we've got this high peak up here. Now it's confirmed this down bar on this weekly chart, and we've got this and we've got this point through here where we are right now on Netflix. If I just copy. I'll just copy that, okay? So let, let me say that again. On this chart here, we have this high point up here and we have this high point up here. So we can see that we made a peak. So all you have to do is just connect, just connect them like you can see like you can see what we've got here. And then all I have to do is create a parallel trend line with the exact same parallel trend line. And I'm just gonna grab this down to see this trough through here. So if I, 
if I show you this here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to probably connect. I'm just going to connect it down to that that point through there. That's all I'm going to do. And as you can see, that if I connect it down through there, you can see that's where we're at. So this Netflix, Netflix on the weekly chart is heading down towards the bottom of this trend line. Now, if I squeeze this up, if I squeeze this up and bring up some other trend lines, where do we see Netflix is likely to go? Well, we can see there's a lot of major areas of resistance right here. So that being said, that being said, it looks like Netflix might actually have another significant drop to the downside. Maybe it may be even early as this week. It may be as maybe as early as this week. So, oh, let me bring that up through there. So you can see you can see what I'm looking at there. So if I bring this up on the weekly on uh, the daily chart here, you can see you know that Netflix is actually very 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 weak. So it, it may it may take a lot longer than that. But you can see there's a, this sort of X marks a spot, and it looks like it might be, might be heading straight down to that. Um, it may do, or it might come down even a bit further to come down through here. But it's looking very, very, very weak overall. And um, and yeah, I'm definitely a seller. I'm definitely a seller um, of sort of rallies, especially in in Netflix. So you can see Netflix, and one stock that I actually already am short on is Google. And um, you know, happy days for Google for me anyway. Um, because I, I saw Google and I, I was actually short Google. Now the reason why I was short Google, and you can see Google actually gapped down about 7%, you can see there. Um, and it came up through there, hit this area of resistance, and then came back down and had a gap down. Now, um, I've actually got put options on Google and you know, and I'm happy about that. But you can see guys, you can see what's actually happening uh, through, you can see what's happening through uh, through here now I saw this market hitting this resistance come back down and it was just slowly 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 pulling up and now we've had this pullback through here so I'm actually I've actually I'm actually still got put options on this one and I'm I'm holding on for a lot longer as well too so overall guys overall you can see even with uh even with Google look at this here gap up on news gap up on news gap down everything is gapping down now on news on their news announcements so what is that telling you what is that saying like even um starbucks what is our st uh starbucks there we go there starbucks even starbucks uh actually gapped down as well too so starbucks gapped down as well too um, you know, we're talking like you know another five or six percent down on, on Starbucks as well too. Now again, Starbucks is another stock that I'm actually very short on um, as well too. Maybe I'm like talking long term shorts. I got a long term directional trades and and Google and and Starbucks is is one of those. And so you can see that's what's happening with Starbucks. Starbucks even gapped down as well too. And I'm short on these, meaning I've got put options on these ones basically. And the reason why is because they all look really really weak to me based on what I'm actually telling you here. You know. Now look at this here, look at this divergence on this here, on the stochastics and the RSI. Or if I squeeze this right up, you can see, you can see on my stochastics guys, you can see that this market was around this resistance level through here, making a divergence through here, making a divergence through there on the RSI and the stochastics. So that to me guys, that to me speaks, speaks tells me that we're likely to have a lot more, a lot more downside to come as well too. So, um... And yeah, you can see what's happening here on the weekly chart. So you can see that's what's happening there uh, as well. So guys, every announcement that's coming out is is actually the market's gapping down, gapping down, gapping down. Um, normally, we'd actually see the market rally up, so uh, gap up. So uh, Carl Carl Icahn just came out recently, or last year actually, and he said that these earnings that these companies are coming out with are actually false. So what we actually see now is we should, we're, see, we're seeing guys if we if forget look at the Dow Jones stuff like that. But if you look at if you look at the economy as a whole, and you start to look at some of these major companies, IBM, Microsoft, Google, Starbucks, um, you know Netflix, some of these big larger companies, they're they're, they're making their earnings announcements and the gaps and, and they're gapping down seven percent, eight percent. So what is that actually telling you about the economy? If you just look at that as a, if you just look at that for what the facts are. Again, look what's happened here, right? We actually had the market continue to crawl up through there and bam, broke down. So you can see that through there. So that's what I'm saying there, guys. You can see that's exactly what's happening on uh, on you know on Starbucks. That you can see that's you know that and I I see I see a lot more a lot more downside to see with uh, with actual Starbucks from from uh, from that as well too. So. 
There we go, guys. There's a few things to look at. One, technically, of what the hap what's happening on the indices, but also, secondly, I wanted to give you in this first uh, weekly market update this week is what is actually happening with the news announcements that's coming out and what is that actually telling you that things are looking weak and that's the reason why guys that's the reason why if i bring up if i bring up nasdaq that's the reason why nasdaq has actually been holding up the worst out of the whole lot where uh, where some where the other indices they've actually gapped up and they've actually continued running up the Nasdaq's been pulled down by its stocks, by the earnings announcements. And so that's actually the weakest out of the whole lot, which is Nasdaq. And I've actually said this for so many times. In fact, that's the reason why I'm actually short, long term anyway, Q, 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 Q. I'm actually short this. Again, that's, we're talking like a 12-month option on this one. And, you know, I'm seeing this Q, Q, Q creating a massive massive head and shoulder formation look at this here it's just it's it's night as day it's glaring right there there's the left head there's the left shoulder there's the head and here's the right shoulder it's glaring as obvious right look how obvious that looks it's glaring obvious and i'm seeing this is now getting ready for this type of action to come down and we're like we're now starting to get ready to fill in this head uh we're we'll filling this head formation which we are you can see here and and the there's two different types of head and head and shoulder formations that that I see in the market. Let me actually bring up a trend line tool. I'll bring up a pen. So we could actually have a head and shoulder formation where the head runs up, it comes back down, it runs back up, makes the makes the head, comes back down, makes a higher trough, and then makes the shoulder. You see this here. See how we got this uh, higher trough, higher trough, peak, higher peak, higher trough, lower peak. Well, that's not as weak as what we're experiencing here. What are we experiencing here? We're experiencing a peak, a trough, a higher peak, a lower trough, and now potentially a lower peak. And if that forms a lower peak, that's actually a lot lower, because once again, we're forming a higher trough, higher peak, lower trough, lower peak, and head and shoulder formation. So that there is a lot weaker. Why? Because we've already formed this lower trough. Once the lower trough forms, that's actually the weakest. That's actually the weakest link, and then we're likely to get downside to come. Makes sense. So, and that's the reason why I'm short low overall long term QQQ. And if I bring up say the the monthly charts, this is the monthly charts here, and the monthly charts just look absolutely insane. You know, like if it starts breaking, especially on the QQQ, we start to break below. Uh, yeah, start the break below the ninety-five dollar level. Then we have a big run down to at least, you know, probably, you know, yeah, big run down to at least seventy dollars. So, uh, yeah, we have we have quite a significant drop down. We're probably going to see like a twenty percent real quick drop down, really, really quickly. So that's what I do see uh, on on that charts. Now, uh, other markets, guys, that I want to keep you up to date with, which is uh, gold, and I'll let you know what I'm happening, what's happening with gold as well too, and uh, and where my positions are on gold, which is GLD, and what I'm doing there. Uh, what I'm doing, guys, for me personally, if it starts to break, we can see that we're going sideways through here, and if we bring up this weekly chart, you can see the markets run up, and we're just going sideways through here, and we have done for a couple of months now. Nothing much is happening with gold. It's GLD. So for me, guys, I think GLD is getting ready for another run to the high side. So if we start to break above these highs here, I'm going to start entering in some call options myself. Now, uh, I may not do that by the time it happens. Okay, so it might it might take another week, and I'm like, you know what, I'm not happy doing that anymore for some certain for for, for some other certain reasons. So um, you know, don't take a trade based on what I just told you to think, because I may not take it based on some other factors that may come into come into the market. Same with silver, SLV. I really like SLV, and I was talking about this last week as well too. That SLV, if SLV, if SLV to me has actually broken out of this long term. If I bring this, if I squeeze this right up, and this is actually the point through here, you can see how that if I bring that down through there, that this is. You can see silver definitely started to change trend, change change trend through there a lot as well too and you can see silver's definitely broken out of you can see that if i bring that up through there there's definitely a resistance through there isn't it definitely resistance through there but if you're looking at the short term you can see how looking at this short term 
short-term resistance line through there. You can see how that it's definitely broken up. We're now starting to break up. We've made a double bottom, a peak, a high trough. Now running up, make a higher trough. I, I think, guys, that when this market comes down and gets into this support level through here, that we're likely to it just accelerate to the high side. So if we look at the daily chart, once again, guys, I'm looking for the I'm looking for SLV to pull off a little bit and come down a little bit um, on that. Um, so that's obviously the SLV, that's the ETF, obviously, following um, the gold price there. So, um, you know, but guys, none of this is guaranteed. None of this is guaranteed to work. You know, you know according to Harry Dent, he's actually saying that um, that gold and silver are likely to head straight back down again. So, you know, even if I do buy it here, it might head back down. Now, yes, he may be wrong and yes, he may be right, but who cares? You know, all I'm saying is I'm going to trade based on what I'm seeing on the charts. And that's exactly what I'm seeing as well, too. So uh, looking at a few things, guys, just quickly look at the UUP, which is the US dollar. Uh, US dollar overall, guys. We can actually see we're actually holding a lot of a lot of support here, and the reason why that's interesting, guys, is this: is that if we if, if the if the dollar if the dollar starts to break where we are right now, then we are likely to see we are likely to see probably a good five to six percent drop really really quickly heading back down towards these lows through here, towards probably probably around about there somewhere around the twenty three dollar mark really 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 quickly and it's probably have just just has a just the acceleration move to the downside and when that happens guess what's going to happen the gold and silver limit up limit up limit up limit up limit up okay so that's the reason why i'm keeping an eye on also uh which is the us dollar that was a weekly chart this is the daily chart us dollar because if we do start to break below these lows here let me let me delete that through there if we do start to break below these lows through here and we start to start to close below there then that's got this here once 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 that closes below there we have a good as you can see a good five or six percent drop to the downside and that's going to cause a spike in silver and and, and also in gld so and uh that's basically what i see on those charts as well too and obviously looking at the australian dollar australian dollar is obviously pulling back so um if the us dollar keeps going down the australian dollar is going to keep going up looks like it so and looking at the weekly chart there Weekly chart looks like it's um, the Australian dollars found, found a bit of a bottom through there. We're having having a bit of rally through here, but looking at this move through here, guys, it does look like that the Australian dollar might want to start having having at least a slight little pullback uh, as well too. So, but guys, looking overall, if we do go through like a 2008 crash, you can see during 2008 the Australian dollar got hit, and also if you look at the uh, where are we there? UUP. You also can see that uh, during 2008 as well too, that the 2008 through here, you can see that the US dollar also got, oh, didn't really get hit that much, did it? It came up and then, then suddenly got hit. And then we had, so we have so um, the, the uh, US dollar was also very, very volatile. So anyway, guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this market update. Here's some things that's on my mind, guys, that I'm looking at for, both technically and news announcements and also looking at the US dollar looking at looking at all those other indices looking at all those other things such as silver slv uh, gld for the gold and stuff like that as well too hope you enjoyed it guys have an amazing amazing week i try to keep you up to date but i'm not going to um i'm trying not to do as much as much many as much updates as, as i used to uh, because i'm just just spending more time trading and and stuff like that so anyway guys hope you enjoyed this please take care of yourself and remember success can be yours if you go clamp so step up take massive action and face your fears today Hey, it's John Howell here, and thanks so much for watching my video. You see, I'm putting out daily videos and education on helping you learning the art of successful trading. So click on the subscribe button to keep up to date with every video I do. Also, check out my story video, $250,000 in debt, cancer, overweight, family passing away, lived on the streets, and more, and how I overcome it and, on, and now thriving through my life. This is here to motivate you, so click on that image to watch my video. And lastly, if you're struggling with your trading, then you need to see my latest webinar where I'm sharing with you an amazing strategy that allows you to generate an income without getting the direction right. So click on that image on this page to register for my next free webinar. This is John Howell here. Remember, success can be yours if you go claim it. So step up, take massive action, and face your fears today.